Go with me to Acts chapter number 13. <clears throat> We're going to spend some time praying tonight. Amen. And so uh, we, we delight to do that because <clears throat> when we pray more, we know more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Say it out loud. I am, I am. a child of God. And I have access to the throne of grace. grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Now, um, if you're in Acts chapter number 13, look with me at verse 2 through 3. It's talking about uh, some ministers that got together and prayed, uh, seeking God about some things. Can you hear me all right? Sounds a little quieter up here. Maybe it's just where I'm standing. Um, verse 2, chapter Acts 13, verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate unto me Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. They were already called to it, but it's time to enter into it. And when they had fasted and prayed they laid their hand, and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. And then verse number 4, they being uh, sent by the Holy Ghost, uh, you know, departed. <clears throat> And so, so forth and so on. They went on their first missionary journey. This is Paul moving from one ministry office, the teacher and prophet, or two, two offices really, and moving into another office. And it was a transition for him into a new, a new phase of ministry. And uh, I, I want to talk to you tonight. I'm going to look, look at some things in the Word about prayer before we pray. <clears throat> I want to go a little different direction maybe. I don't know if you remember, I don't know, maybe a year ago, I spent some time talking about something, wasn't, wasn't, maybe, maybe a couple Wednesday nights or something like that, talking about um, things that prayer won't replace. You know, it won't replace you getting the knowledge of God's Word and won't replace you uh, getting the Word in you. Uh, it won't replace, for example, the authority of the believer. You know what I'm talking about? We talked about some of those kinds of things. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, there was more to that series than, uh, uh, you know, than we got, got to get into. We, we talked also about that you can't, uh, prayer won't take the place of renewing your mind. And I think that was one of the main emphasis of it. But um, the Lord brought me back to that in preparing for tonight, and He reminded me of something. He, and He's been talking to me about this for about a week, maybe a week and a half now, about the importance of what we were sharing in the offering, being led by the Spirit of God. And so I want to share with, with you about that tonight. It might sound like I'm preaching against prayer tonight, but I'm not. I'm just uh, bringing both of those together. Amen. I want to talk about the fact that prayer won't take the place of catching the cues of the Spirit and following them. I want you to notice here in Acts 13, it says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said something. You know, prayer is the place of hearing from God. Doesn't mean He has to have you pray and to hear for Him to talk to you. You understand that. But I'm telling you, most of the time I've heard from God is when I was praying or meditating on the Word. Or soon thereafter as, as a result of that quiet fellowship with Him. People say, I don't hear much. Well, do you pray much? Or is you just busy, busy, busy? Our culture tries to keep my, our minds busy, busy, busy. And our mind's noisy. And our body's noisy. The Lord spoke to me one time. He said, <laughs> this is a number of years ago, so maybe some things have changed. But I'm just telling you what he said. He said, if you walked into most of your congregation's homes, you'd be surprised at the atmosphere in their homes. You know, just look straight ahead. He didn't say it was you. but I just <laughs> There's no quietness. There's no peace. There's just a lot of noise, a lot of activity. No being still and knowing that I'm God. Amen. 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 I've had people walk into our home and say, boy, it's just good to be here. It's peace in here. Amen. Well, see, that's created by what we do in that home. Amen. You ever walked in a house and, or a room and is there's tension? You found, out, you found out later somebody was in there fighting and you, didn't even, you weren't even there here to fight, but you sensed the tension. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, so, but... You have to create an atmosphere for God to talk to you. Um, and it's not that he's, he's talking all the time, but there's a certain atmosphere you hear better in. And so prayer is one of those places. And so I want you to notice here, prayer is a place of hearing something. In other words, prayer is supposed to be a dialogue, not a monologue. You know, a dialogue's two ways, right? 
And so if we'll pray more, we'll know more. I didn't say if Pastor Debbie and I would pray more. I said if we will pray more, we will know more. You will know more. I will know more. We'll all know more. Well, you mean God's going to talk to me about all that's happening, the expansion into Kansas City and the expansion into social media and all that? He's going to talk to me. I thought it was all about pastor. Well, you got a part in this. What's your part? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you just told off on yourself. Boy, it got quiet on that. <laughs> just keep smiling. I'm not mad at anybody. Pastor Debbie's been real good to me today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we all need to know what our part is, and that means we all got to pray or get to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. But what are we to do when, we, when God talks to us or when we hear God? I want you to notice, this is, verse, this is here in Acts 13, Acts 13, 2 and 3. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate unto me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work run to I have called them. And when they had prayed, that's verse 3, now verse, or that's verse 2. Verse 3, and when they had fasted and prayed. So they prayed a little bit more, but it wasn't much, because by the end of the verse, they were already on the plane. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? They already caught their first flight out of town. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate unto me, Barnabas, and Saul, where the work run to have called them. And uh, when they had fasted and prayed, laid their hands on them, they sent them away. And they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. So, so they're already, by the end of the next verse, they're already on the first leg of their journey. They're already on the plane. Caught their first flight out of town. Yeah. Went home, packed their bags, and they're gone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when you hear from God in prayer, what are you supposed to do? Possibly pray just a little bit, make sure there's nothing else He wants to say. Because they did pray a little bit longer. Yeah. Right? But, you, but, but by the end of the verse, are you with me tonight? Yes, by the end of the verse, they've moved from prayer to action. Yes, amen. From prayer to action. Are you still out there? Something has to, when God speaks to us, a lot of people, they keep on praying. Now, what I mean by that, not that it's wrong to keep praying, but See, see, God has spoken to us some things to do, and we have moved. You can ask the staff. Any staff here willing to raise their hands? There's one. Here, are you staff? <laughs> what have we done? Have we, have we continued praying, or have we moved into action? We moved into action. <laughs> we had a meeting this week. Was it, when was it? Last week, actually, that the staff started. I could, sort of, I could see the look in their face, but they kept the joy. Because <laughs> we're moving into action. I said, we're moving into action. We have been moving into action, but now we have moved into action, action. Amen. 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 Now, we're continuing to pray, but not without doing what we already know. Are you with me tonight? So, um, this is where a lot of Christians miss it. They, God speaks to them, and they keep on praying. Now, you, there's a place to keep on praying. But they, in other words, my point is, they don't, they don't move to action. They just keep praying. Yeah. Gong. You ever remember the gong show in the old, the old days? Some of you don't even know what the gong show is probably, but that means you missed. That's the wrong answer. <laughs> Amen. So for the early church, it just wasn't all about praying. It was about actions of faith on those cues they got in prayer. Amen. 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 Prayer is like, you know, you've ever watched a football game, you know what football game's like. They huddle, and then they break, and go into action. And then they huddle, go into break again. They break the huddle, and then they go into action. Right? You know what prayer is? It's our huddle. We ought to, yeah, okay, got it. Break. And everybody goes and does what they're supposed to do. Some of you haven't smiled yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when in the huddle, instructions came, directions came. Isn't that right? Then they execute. They break and they execute. Isn't that right? And then they come back and pray some more. But not because they're just wanting God to say something different. They're already executing what he said. So we took that step. Any other steps? Yeah, do this. Okay, execute. Break. 
And we keep on doing that and doing that until our lives and the ministry here looks exactly like God's plan. Yeah. Hallelujah. Once instructions come, the team doesn't do any more huddling. I mean, I mean they, they, once they have to carry out that instruction before they do any more huddling. You understand what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. They go out to execute what they heard in the huddle. So Jesus did the same thing whenever he, uh, the Bible said he just did what he saw his father do and said what he heard his father. See, his prayer time was his huddle with the father. And then he'd get up in the morning. The Bible said he'd get out the great while before day. I was thinking about that. I woke up at 3 o'clock this morning and was praying. I thought, this is exactly what Jesus, great while before day. Sun doesn't start, you know, starts getting a little light about 5 o'clock or whatever it is now. And, uh, but this is a great while before day. I'm just like Jesus, I thought this morning. I was just like... <laughs> And so, but he would do that, break, okay, go out and do it, come back and spend more time with his father. Amen. And he got more done in three and a half years than any man had ever done in the spirit. Well, we ought to learn how to do this, don't you think? Now, um, for tonight, the Spirit of God began to deal with me a couple weeks ago um, and said, I need you to make those that I want to use, the laborers that I want to use in some of the things that I'm leading you into, uh, that, that, that you need to help you do that. I want you to make them a target for your prayer life. So uh, we're going to do that tonight. Now, a little, little warning here. You're going to be praying about yourself. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of us have a part in this. Amen. There are two areas that so Satan opposes ministries in the most, and we've watched this, uh, and we stay on top of it with our faith. Number one, uh, the laborers that are needed. Yes, yes. I mean, he tries to sift people. He, try, he does all kinds. He messes with their mind. He tries to get them offended. He does all kinds of stuff. Yes. Yes, Number one, laborers. He tries to keep laborers, and that's why Jesus said, Pray ye the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers into yes, his harvest. Yes. So in other words, make that a point, uh, make that a, a target for your prayer life. And the second area is the area of finances. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And we won't spend time tonight talking about praying how for how to pray for finances, about finances, because it's we've shared on that, and, and it's not like most people think. But uh, I want to talk tonight about these these that are called to help us. Uh, specifically concerning the ministry, start planning the search, church in Kansas City. I want to have a meeting. I'm, I'm, I don't have the date set yet. I'm looking at the calendar. We're looking at the time, seeing when it seems right. Maybe sometime either this month or next month, just have a, a service where we talk more about what God's saying, what He's doing. So much is happening. So much is just, I mean, it's already rolling. A lot of things are already rolling. Um, um, you know, and, and, and like, for example, in the building search, we had one we looked at, and I thought, well, I'll call on it. And they said, well, it's already being leased. Signed it today. Okay, call me if you need any opportunity. And call another one. Oh, well, that's already, somebody already took that one. All right. And then there's another one. So, and, and I told, I was talking to Brian today about um, one of the building, and I said, well, just call them, see what. I said, the way I have it in my heart is just follow leads. If it seems like it might be, just follow lead, and, and, and then we'll just see what the Holy Ghost is saying. In other words, we're moving. Yeah. We're not sitting. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, show us. Well, why don't you get out there and look? <laughs> you know, it's easier to direct a moving car than it is a car sitting still. <laughs> You're not going to go anywhere sitting still in a car and turning your wheel this way, turning your wheel that way. I don't know why I'm not getting to the grocery store. Well, <laughs> if you move and turn, you'll get to the grocery store. Amen. Hallelujah. Faith will turn you into a person of action. Not sitting by singing Kumbaya. I've got some people in mind. I want to kick them in the seat of the pants and say, you're just sitting doing nothing. But I won't. <laughs> they got quiet on that too. So. <laughs> well, I never met a pastor like you. Well, all right. Now, so. Um, we'll talk about this tonight here a little bit. Um, in developing in any ministry, uh, that development of the ministry calls for people to step up. It calls for people that have been faithful to be summoned into the next place God has for them. I'm not talking about bringing everybody on staff. We're going to hire some more people. 
but, 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 you know, all of us have something to do whether we're on staff or not. And our job is to spend enough time in prayer to find out what our part is. You understand what I'm talking about? And so when it, when it's, when it comes to uh, enlarging our tents, you know, remember that verse? Uh, lengthen your cords, enlarge your tent. Remember that? Because that's what's happening here. Um, when it comes to that kind of thing, it requ- calls for more people to step up. It calls people up. It calls people that they been maybe didn't even know what they're being trained for. What, what you know? Well, it seems like I'm just not doing a lot. Well, honey, you've been been proven faithful. <laughs> if there's nothing else, you've been being, being proven faithful. And God's going to deal with us to call some of you up and uh, get you uh, plugged in in some ways maybe you haven't been in. Amen. Uh, it's going to call for all hands on deck. The more I look at it all and look at what we've got to step out into and everything, I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Lord, any day you send me the patent for that duplicating machine, I want to have a lot of people I want to duplicate. (laughs) Amen. Praise God. Two of each of you would be pretty good. Most of you. Anyway, most of you. It's just... (laughs) All right, I'm just having fun at your expense. (laughs) Hallelujah. Now, there's two sides to what I want to address tonight. I want to deal with the prayer side, praying for laborers tonight. I want to deal with that side. But then I also want to deal with each of us learning, each of us as laborers, learning to follow the Spirit for ourselves. Because all our prayer for people uh, as laborers won't amount to a hill of beans. If people that we're praying for don't learn to follow what they have in their heart whenever their head doesn't understand. Amen. Amen. It's one thing for God to deal with somebody. It's another thing for them to recognize it and step on into it. This is called Spirit of Faith Family Church. Not not Spirit of Resisting the Holy Ghost. The family church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God's got a plan. And uh, he's, got, he's got people on deck to step into that, to their part of that plan. Amen. But we can pray until we peel the paint off the walls. I mean, so much power falls in here that the paint starts peeling off the walls. And <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Unless people recognize the dealings of the Spirit and follow those promptings, God's plan is not going to move forward. It's going to be hindered. So when we pray for laborers, we're praying for them, Lord, help them get it. Amen. One of the staff came to me the other day and said, we've been in prayer, praying for some people, and they just haven't got it. I said, I understand that. Welcome to my world. I'm pa- well, I didn't say all that, but I, I thought it. <laughs> I thought it. I went away and thought it. Wasn't that nice I didn't say it? (laughs) Amen. 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 Do you know how many people I meet that I I, I watch that battle go on in their heart, between their heart and their head? Amen. Boy, it's awfully quiet in here. Some of you, oh, I I don't know if it's me or not. Well, I don't know either. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't some of you just try to hit it by moving rather than try to hit it by stopping? Yeah, that'd be a good one. All right, somebody said, you're mad. No, I'm not mad at anybody. I'm just, I'm just, uh, anyway, I'm just helping you to understand that we're waiting on you. (laughs) Amen. To move, to move, to move. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brendan here, he, 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 a couple years, well, I don't know how long ago it was. God dealt with him. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he, and there were some things that, anyway, he took some steps. Yeah. And when he took some steps, things started. Boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I was waiting for him for a number of years, but he got it. I got Amen. Yes, yes, you were worth waiting on, that's right. <laughs> Well, I hope you don't point me out. Well, I hope you get it. That's what I hope. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. We've all been there. I've been there. 
I made that mistake whenever God dealt with me about pastoring. Ah, no, I no. See, it's that battle because in my heart I knew it, but in my head, well, let me let me back up. It was I saw in prayer. I saw, you know, for example, let me illustrate this way. Remember the prophets in the Old Testament. The Bible says clearly, and you can see it t- referred to in the New Testament, that they saw the two separate advents of Christ in the earth, the first one and when He's going to come back. They saw it all in one blended vision, and they didn't see the church age between those two. The Bible says that. And sometimes in prayer you can see certain things and you think one is going to lead right into the other, but you don't see there's a step between it. And that's what I didn't see. I didn't see the pastoring part. I I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Uh, So whenever the Lord started dealing with me about it, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm talking about? See, that's the way we are. We got our mind made up. We think we know everything that God's saying. Well, praise the Lord. Somebody's needing to hear this tonight. So Brother Hagin used to always talk about, remember Jesus said to him in that vision, this is why he'd say it. He said, Jesus said, if you learn to follow my spirit, I'll make you rich. He didn't say, he didn't say if you follow my spirit. He said, if you learn, you got to learn to do this. You got to learn to do it. Too, too many people's head dominates them. Amen. So prayer is not a be-all, end-all. It's part of the revelation of God's Word concerning how He brings His will to pass. And it's a vital part. Amen. There's a lot of things we're not going to know if we don't pray. That's the truth about it. Many things... Uh, that, we'll, uh, that we'll do without. Like praying, for example, Colossians 1.19, Paul, or Colossians 1.9, Paul prayed for the saints at Colossae. He said, I, see, I pray for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that God would give you the, the uh, not be, that you'd be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. He's praying them that they would see what God's will is. Isn't that right? So that's very important. If we'll pray more, we'll know more. Uh, I mean, I can pray for you, but, but there's things unless you get quiet, unless you find out what your part is in it, you're not going to be able to ascertain. Doesn't mean it's not available. It's just that it's a little like, see, people don't understand sometimes that God broadcasts in a different realm than their head. He broadcasts in the spirit realm. God is a spirit, so therefore He's communicating in that realm. And, and the thing about human beings is they are spirit beings too but they also have a mind and a, and a body. And some people are more dominated by their mind and their body, and so God's signal is coming in a realm they're not paying any attention to. It's coming to the realm of their spirit. But that's not a realm they pay much attention to. So their spirit knows things their head doesn't know yet. That's the way a lot of Christians are. I, I meet them all the time. Absolutely all the time. This is one of the biggest problems in the body of Christ. Really, it's an unrenewed mind problem because the mind is dominating them. And if they'd renew their mind, it wouldn't dominate their their spirit, what they know in their spirit. And so um, the the, the point I'm making is, Colossians 1, 9, he prayed that they'd be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And that's very important. But without folks responding to what God does show them, you know what I mean? See, people let it get past them then what, what, no matter how much we pray, the will of God will never come to pass. All right, all right. Come on. Yeah. So tonight, we're talking about learning to follow the Spirit yeah. in what He says in prayer. Now, when He says something to you in prayer, you need to write it down. Yeah. Because I, at the time it comes, it can seem like, I'll never forget that for the rest of my life. It's so strong. It's so real. So, and, then, and then you get busy and talk to somebody after church and 14 people before you leave the building, you talk to them and you get out the door and you forgot totally about what he said. Because now you're over in the mental realm again. And, and that's, the, that's not the realm he spoke yet. But your heart heard what he said and it knows what he said. We got to do, learn to follow that though. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so one reason folks don't respond to God's will is because they don't recognize how God leads them. Their mind's still dominating them rather than their heart. Some people already have their mind made up. Right. Pastor Debbie has helped me in this. She, she said, she, I guess I don't know exactly where she is. She said things like to me, and it's helped me a lot. She said, um, 
I've learned to, I, I, maybe you can help me, go to prayer and just sort of lay everything on the altar and, and everything I even thought was God or something like that. She would say things like that. Especially during meetings. Yeah. All week, just yeah. Lay go. Down yeah, ideas. go into pre- meetings without preconceived ideas about, you know, what, what God wants me to do and stuff. Don't yeah. lay your life out before God. Ask him. Yeah, ask Him. Yeah. Amen. How many of you know we're always open? Yes. 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 Always open. Yes. Yes. Always ready for, for what He has to say. Yes. Amen. Now, um, here in 1 Timothy 1.19, real quickly, Amplified. 1 Timothy 1.19. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. I might have to take a minute here to get this. This verse is powerful. Let's, uh, in the Amplified, 1 Timothy 1, 19, holding fast to faith, that leaning of the entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence, and having a good, clear conscience. Now, let, for, for understanding what he's saying, take out what's in parentheses, holding fast to faith and having a good, clear conscience. So hold, when you hold to faith, well, some, some, somebody say, I'm holding to this in faith. Well, there's, two, there's something else you're supposed to hold to along with that. It's what your conscience is telling you. That's right. That's right. Yes. Your conscience is to guide your faith. Listen to me. Somebody said, I thought my faith was built on the Word. It is. But it's a big book. You have to be guided into what He's saying to you in the Word by the Holy Spirit. This keeps faith exciting. It's never dull, never boring, not, never dusty, because you've been, been using the same old, same old, same old for the last 17 years. It's always alive, something new. He's always speaking and, 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 and breathing on the Word and showing you things that will help you in that, that walk of faith. And so, notice he said, holding fast to faith and having a good, clear conscience, by rejecting and thrusting from them their conscience, some individuals have made shipwreck of their faith. Notice that. In other words, shipwreck is an injured ship. <laughs> so he's saying you'll injure, your shi- you'll injure your faith by thrusting away from you those things that keep coming up out of your spirit. See, your conscience is the voice of your spirit. That's what your conscience is. And by, by walk, in walking by faith, if while you're walking by faith, something comes up in your heart and you thrusting it away. Notice he said that thrusting from themselves. If you thrust that away or push that away, you'll injure your faith. Most Christians haven't thought about that. Are you there? See, your conscience is in contact with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit in you passes something He knows on to your spirit, and your spirit passes it on to you, yeah. that, that, that's not intended to be pushed away. Yeah. That's intended to guide your faith. Amen. Bring that along with you in your walk of faith. Yeah. Hold Amen. fast to that just like you hold yes. fast to your Amen. faith. Yeah. Amen. 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 To thrust that away from you will cause you to dull your spirit. It'll cause you to dull your spirit. And you'll actually injure your faith, is what he's saying. It'll actually injure your life as well. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 20, 27. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure how long we're going to teach here tonight. I'm going to make this as fast as I can. Proverbs 20, 27. I didn't want to... I kept trying to stay away from what I'm, gonna, what I'm sharing with you here. And the Lord kept bringing me back to it. Kept bring, I thought it was just for my private devotional time because I've been feeding on this so much. He said, no, I want you to talk about it in the prayer service tonight. Yeah. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Yes. The spirit of man. How many of you know we are spirit beings? Yes, sir. Yes. And this isn't the Holy Spirit. This is the spirit of man. Yes. <clears throat> is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. Remember his spirit, Romans 8, 20, uh, Romans 8, 14 and 16, bears witness with our spirits. This is how God guides us and leads us in life. Of course, number one, the Word. It's all in line with the Word. Amen. Amen. But His Spirit bears witness with our spirits, not our head. Not our intellect. Man, do I want sometimes to pull people's understanding back and show them this, that, that uh, they follow their head more than their heart. So this, he's saying the spirit of man is the kennel of the Lord. In other words, that's where God illuminates you. Yes. Yes. And the spirit of man's not up on your shoulders. He said it's in your belly. Yes. 
It's down the core of your being. That's why Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. This spoke he of the Spirit. So the Spirit lives in your spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in your spirit. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost, right? Well, He doesn't live in your brain. He lives in your spirit. Well, it says that the, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, so you must live in my body. The only reason He lives in your body is because that's where you live. Your spirit. Where, he's, where He lives is where He talks from. It's where He speaks from. It's where He witnesses to you with. It's much deeper than your intellect. That's why if you're busy mentally, you won't pick it up. His Spirit bears witness with our spirits. I know we've taught this before. I need a refresher on this constantly. So, when he said the Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, they, had, they didn't have light bulbs back then. A candle is how they illuminated a room. So we could say the Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord or the light bulb of the Lord. In other words, that's where he's going to enlighten you. That's where he's going to guide you. <clears throat> Amen. Is in your spirit. So what he's saying is because of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, your spirit who's in contact with the Holy Spirit, and that's where the realm that God broadcasts in, then that, your, your spirit is going to know things that your mind doesn't know. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. The reason he knows that is because the Holy Spirit is in you and passes it on to your spirit. It's not a voice. Now he does have a voice. The Holy Spirit has a voice and he can talk. But most of the time it's just an inner knowing. Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. An inner knowing. An inner know not a head knowing, an inner knowing. Amen. That many times your head doesn't understand. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Then God wants that knowledge that you have in your spirit to float up and enlighten your mind. Amen. 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 Not to taint it with your, the thoughts of your mind, but just simply to act upon it. Yes. Amen. Well, why is that the route that God uses to get the information to me? It's because God is a spirit, and He's in the realm. He broadcasts in the realm that He is. Yes, sir. Now, today we got Internet and cable TV and all that, but in the old days they had, you know, a signal that came through the air for the television as well as a signal that came through the air for the radio. Yeah. And if you're on your radio trying to get a TV channel, yeah. you can't find it. Right. That's not the realm that they're broadcasting the TV signal on. Right? Yes, and that's what people are doing. Christians are doing that. God's broadcasting in a realm they're not paying any attention to. They, they're not tuned into that. They're tuned into their body. They're tuned into their mind. Spirit of faithers sometimes. Oh, I go to spirit of faith. That can't be me. That, 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 coming here and sitting in the church doesn't mean anything. This is a new skill you've got to learn. This is a new habit you've got to learn. This is called renewing the mind, developing the human spirit. Pastor Debbie's preached on this all the time. And learning to follow what he's saying to your spirit. Hallelujah. 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 So, a lot of times the reason people don't follow it is because what, what comes, the natural mind doesn't want or doesn't understand. They don't want that to be the answer. Let me tell you something about what you want. You don't even know what you want. Oh, I sure do. Well, if you really knew what was attached to it, you really don't want that. You want what God wants. Taking paths which He has prepared ahead of time. Living the good life. That's what you want. You want His paths. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So, but a lot of people, people's mind, they've already made up their mind. You know what I'm talking about? No, oh, I've already made up my mind. I've already made up my mind. They're not open. And here's something. God might have spoken something to you. Boy, I could, I could spend some time and make some illustrations on this. I just don't have the time. God can talk to you about something. Like, okay, let, I'll illustrate with me. Aren't you glad I'm not talking about you? <clears throat> God had spoken to us, and me specifically, about some things that He had for us in the ministry in the future. And when He spoke that, I wasn't open to anything before that because I had my focus on that. God's talking to somebody right here tonight. 
And because God said that, you're just blah, 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 blah to anything else. Whenever what he's saying, what he's trying to get you to do is take this step and that'll get you to that step. Mm. And, and God had to work with me on that. And God's working with some of us on that, all of us here tonight. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So your job is to renew your mind and not let your mind dominate your spirit. You remember God said to Abraham, he said, I'm going to give you a seed, you know, through you and Sarah. And uh, <clears throat> through him, you know, uh, your seed will multiply as the stars of the heaven. Remember, he showed him that and so forth and so on. And so Abraham's like, yep, got it. I mean, eventually he got it. And then God said about that same son that he was going to use to multiply his seed throughout the whole earth. He said, now go offer him as a sacrifice. Oh, no, God, that's not God. That's the, I rebuke you, devil. God told me he's going to be the one that he multiplies my seed through. It seemed like God was saying something different than what he had said, but he wasn't. Well, praise the Lord. That's where some of you are right now. So, um, praise the Lord. It's a little different in here tonight. <laughs> Whatever God's saying to your heart, learn to lean to that. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. My son, you know, or Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. What do you lean to? What he said. Well, it's not always a voice, though. Sometimes it's just an inward knowing. I know I'm supposed to do that, but I don't want to. Something wrong with me, De Pastor. There's something wrong with me. I don't want to. Cast the devil out of me. Well, <laughs> Jesus didn't want to go to the cross either. But it wasn't the devil. It was the flesh. He said, the spirit's willing, the flesh is weak. But he had to pray himself through that. Hallelujah. Prayer is where you learn consecration. Your prayer life is where you learn consecration. Boy, oh boy, I've been through some times. <laughs> Lord, I don't much want to do that. Don't much want to do that. You know, that didn't really impress him at all. I've just learned not to do that anymore. Praise be to God. So whatever God's saying to your heart, learn to lean to that. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. That means lean to what he's saying. And then in all your ways, acknowledge him. So lean to that and acknowledge that. What does it mean to lean to something? It means to rely on that, yes. depend on that. Right. The Bible said in 1 John 2, 27, <clears throat> the anointing teaches us in, and, and uh, all things and teaches us, uh, same anointing teaches you all things and is truth and is no lie. Why would he say that in the middle of being led by, the, a verse about being led by the Spirit? It's truth and no lie because your flesh and your mind are going to say that just can't be so, that just can't be so. Amen. Amen. But it is a truth. What he's dealing with your heart about is the truth and no lie. <clears throat> you got to trust that. You got to lean that on that. You got to acknowledge that. Depend on your spirit. When you're making decisions, depend on your spirit to guide you, yeah. not lean on your understanding. Because God doesn't talk to your understanding, He talks to your heart. Amen. If you practice a lifestyle of overriding your spirit, then you're going to eventually lose proficiency spiritually. Your spirit will become dull. And God talks through a megaphone and you won't even hear Him. Amen. And you'll make shipwreck of your faith. You'll get a lot of bumps and bruises in life. <clears throat> you'll be doing things wrong, messing up, doing your own thing. But not only does your spirit lose proficiency, your mind gains proficiency. And that affects your faith, because your faith is of the heart. Faith with the heart man believeth. You don't believe with your head. You believe with your heart. Are you with me tonight? So if, if your spirit loses proficiency and your head gains proficiency, that just simply means that's going to affect your faith. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. Remember we talked about Andrew in the, in the offering. That's exactly what Andrew did. He, 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 the answer came, but he, ah, that couldn't be it. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. 
I did that with this building. <laughs> Absolutely the truth. Amen. Maybe we'll get up and have you testify after I'm done telling my stories. <laughs> But I, I just, I saw it and I didn't like it. Yeah. Remember the big berms of dirt we had up along the building? I thought it looked like somebody was going to put a cannon out there and shoot out those windows or something, you know? I didn't like, nah, that ain't it. But I had this in here, but I'm like, nah, 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 blah, 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 going somewhere else. Let's look, let's look at the next place. She came by. I didn't know it. She came by the same day. I think it was the same day and saw it. And she had the same witness. And she called me, if I remember it was the same day, called me and said, I believe I found the building. I said, oh, great, great, where is it? And she described it. It's like, oh, no, I saw that one. That ain't it. <laughs> but it was. You know, not everybody that says something that's not God, that doesn't mean it's not God. Why do they keep saying over and over and over again, no, that's not God. No, that's not God. Why? It's probably because God's dealing with them, and that's God. Yeah, hallelujah. If you'll help me preach, I'll get this done quicker. Whew, glory. So here in 1 Timothy 1.19, this verse is talking about a relationship between your faith and your spirit. Your faith and your spirit. Your spirit man has something to say and speak in order to guide your faith. Isn't that good? So your, your conscience is to inform your faith. God's Word doesn't give you all the specifics. It gives you... Uh, a lot of general things concerning his will but it doesn't give you his the specifics like which building do we we, we uh, move into in Kansas City uh, you know if, if you're single and you're getting married which person do you marry just all those kinds of things but we've given, been given the Holy Ghost for all that and your faith will work much better listening to him than it will rejecting what he's saying uh huh I've learned this the hard way. So tell your neighbor, he's talking about himself and you too. <clears throat> okay, let's talk a little bit about praying for people, before, praying for laborers before we go. Go to Acts 12.1. <clears throat> I said I was going to share both sides of this. We're going to talk about us learning to follow the Spirit. We, we could spend, you know, three more weeks on that. But <clears throat> let's go to the side of praying for folks. Uh, Matthew, you're turning to Acts 12.1. I'm going to quote Matthew 9, 36 through 38 while you're turning there. When he saw the multitude, he has moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. They said unto him, then said he unto the, his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. He'll send forth laborers into his harvest. So he's talking about praying for laborers. Acts 12, 1, where I had you turn. Now about that time Herod stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Underline or circle certain. There's certain uh, people that the devil... See, this is not just hair. This is the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There's certain people that there's a great conquest going on in the spirit realm over certain ones. It's true. Yeah. It's, true. Yeah. it's the truth. It is, now, I don't mean the devil's not after all of us. Right. But he's after, a, he's after certain ones especially. Isn't that right? Yeah. Always remember that there's certain uh, people that there's a great conquest going on in the spirit realm over them. And sometimes you'll pick that up in prayer. Why is that great conquest going on? Because of their role in the plan of God. Do you know there, there, there are certain ones, if they don't have, if they're not standing in their role and functioning in their place correctly, there's a lot of other folks that right. it's going to mess their place up. Amen. It has to do with the plan. You've heard us say it over and over again. It's not about a man, it's about a plan. About the plan, not a plan, the plan. Amen. That's, that's, that's what the devil's fighting in the earth. He's fighting the plan of God. So when it comes to the, the, the ministry, this one, others, whatever, God has a plan for that ministry, and part of that plan is to raise up laborers to carry out that plan. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. Leaders, in other words, workers to, that have a part in that plan. And uh, they're the ones to be focused on in prayer. Yes. Notice it said, the devil was after certain ones. Yes. You know, in military, you, you might have watched this over in uh, the war in Ukraine, but you've seen it. Um, 
military strategy is not to just go in and kill everybody. It's to go in and take out certain centers of power, maybe a communication center, maybe a railroad, a transportation center, a railroad center, a bridge or something. They're going after certain places. Isn't that right? That's just a military campaign. And we ought to be as smart as they are at war. And wherever the devil is, whatever he's after, whatever certain ones he's after, make those a you know, target for our faith or target for our prayer life. Does that make any sense? You remember Luke 22, and you can just write this down. I won't have to take time to go there. Luke 22, 31 through 32. He said to Simon, 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 Peter. Listen, Satan has excessively asked excessively that all of you be given up to, uh, up to him out of the power and keeping of God, yeah. that he might sift you all like grain. But I've prayed especially for you, Peter, that your own faith may not fail. And when you, you uh, yourself have turned again, strengthen and establish your brethren. So he's, notice I prayed especially for you, Peter. So he's, 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 he's making Peter a target for his prayer life. And we can see why in the book of Acts. Because of how God wanted to use him. Man, this is good help tonight. Hallelujah. So uh, that, that's, you can see the conflict that Jesus entered into in the spirit realm over Peter. Satan wanted him. But Jesus did too. Jesus wanted him more. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we can help these kinds of people. Yes, you remember the Bible says uh, in 2 Corinthians 2, 14, this is the Amplified, thanks be to God who always causes us, leads us as in triumph, as trophies of Christ's victory. Yes. You ever thought about that? Mm -hmm. Laborers are trophies. All right. yeah. Do you get that? Yeah. Laborers are people that yeah. Satan's coming for and God wants. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Amen. The role that a person plays in the plan of God, as well as that plan itself, are the gold medal that the forces of darkness are contending for. And if they get them, they just dance around like they won an Olympic competition or something. Because they got a gold medal. Amen. Well, how about we say, no, no, we're going to get the gold medal. We're trophies of Christ's victory. And so whenever the devil's after somebody trying to sift them that, he's trying, that God's trying to use, we say, nah, shakamaya. No, 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 we see that. That's part of getting in the Spirit. You said, the Bible says in Ephesians 5 or 6, actually, verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication for all saints. Yeah. Yeah. So we should do that for all saints. But you really don't even know all saints. So you're going to have to follow the Holy Ghost in that. And as you pray for all saints, He's going to zero you in on certain ones. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. I've got certain ones that, that I'm praying for Amen. because I know, I don't, I don't maybe don't know everything in my head yet, but I know there's some reason yeah. that, that they're important. Yeah. Yeah. They're important. This plan is going to come to pass because they bring their supply. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Neither God nor Satan can block the plan of God in the earth uh, unless someone yields to them. Yeah. You ever thought about that? Yeah. Amen. The spirit realm can't access earth without somebody giving access to the spirit realm. I'm talking about either God or the devil. And so Satan's contending for people's lives because they're part of God's plan. But God is as well. However, He uses us by moving on us by His Spirit in order to make a supply of the Spirit available to them. He might come against them through tempting them, trying to deceive them, trying to get them out of the plan and, and follow their own plan, or try to distract them. Or well, He's got a lot of things He tries to do. But through prayer, we make a supply of the Spirit available to them. And as we make a supply of the Spirit available to them, they have the spiritual wherewithal, so to speak, to be able to stand up and resist that and say, no, I'm not going to yield to that. I'm going to follow God's plan. Amen. But it's because we prayed and made that available to them. Well, I just thought if somebody had something from God, they'd just make it. And if they don't make it, they just didn't have anything from God. Well, you don't treat a baby born into your family that way. You got a little newborn here. And you just put him down on the, on, in the bed and say, well, if, you know, because he's, he's an Eberly. You know, if he's, a, he's an Eberly, he'll make it. Yeah. You know, we Eberlys, we make it. They don't make it because you just 
Hello? Nobody makes, no, you didn't make it without mommy and daddy. Burp, oh, oh ooh, there's something coming out. Okay, so. <laughs> you, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Some of you were losing your, they, you were going out the door already. I had to get you back. <laughs> God is looking through the earth for someone to yield to His Spirit, enter into prayer as a solicitor before the throne of grace on the behalf of others who God wants to use to bring His plan to pass. Amen. Praise be to God. Well, did you get anything out of that? I believe God wants us to be watchers. You read in the Bible that word, watch and pray. Those two words are put together a lot. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. But then it says, watch ye therefore and pray always. And he talks about it in different ways at different times. But so we ought to be watching over the laborers.